Hey, welcome back to Sunday Drive with Zim. Today we're gonna touch on a fun subject, consequences. What are the consequences of our actions? What are the consequences of getting into VR? Today we're gonna be circling Lake Louise, which is a Canadian mod map in the set of Corsa. And it is one of my favorites. I'm driving the Expo. Fun little, uh, fun little car. <laughs> so, we are going to talk about consequences. All right. Getting in. Getting into the start of this subject, there's a few different angles to touch on. The first thing to talk about, I would say... Hold on. Where are we going? We're going to be going to the crow's nest, I think. Let's uh, switch our tracks here. Because that's a little... A little heavy. It's getting a little bit in involved. Okay, so... Let's go to uh, Crow's Nest, which is all the way at the top of this mountain. And actually one of my favorite drives on this map. We're just going to take this car up and have a little bit of fun. Okay, consequences. So, uh, when I first got into VR, one of the first things I thought about when I was thinking about ordering the DK2 was... Hang on a second. New technology. Is this going to fry my eyes? What's gonna happen? Like, you gotta be a frontiersman. You gotta be comfortable with potentially taking some risk on board. It's a risk-reward relationship, so... Thinking about it at that time, I was, you know, you know about the panel, it's okay, you know, it's just a head strap. There's, there's, there's not many data points that you have to go on to say this is safe technology, this is safe for me. So you have this thought in your head that goes through and says, am I going to be in the news 20 years from now with my eyeballs falling out? And they're going to call it Zimitis. They're going to call it Zimitis. Anytime you lose your vision to virtual reality, a whole tranche of people who had gotten in early spent too much time in it and their eyeballs fell out. Or they went blind. Or they got eye cancer. Or face tumors or something horrible happening. Right? And that's there. That's the chance. The chance you you acknowledge and accept, or perhaps that you just don't even think about. There's a lot of risk takers out there who are just full-on opportunists, um, take advantage of a situation and say, you know what, I've, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump at this. This is so cool, I don't care what it costs me. And I don't mean the money, I mean health or whatever concerns. Like, the don't care, it doesn't matter. It's so cool, feck it. I'm getting in. Consequences. Consequences. Like an echo. You know, in a mountain canyon. Reminding you that they, someone's got to pay a bill. Someone is going to have to pay the price of this technology to be so fecking amazing. Now who do we know has paid the toll? Right? We talked about potentials. We've had a fella in, in Russia sad case where a man, you know, fell through a glass table and died. Didn't clear his environment. And, uh, and died as a result. So is it possible to die in VR? It is. So if that's the case, then we gotta look at this, you know, with a life and death bias to say, is the technology worth the risk? And what have been the effects on me personally? What have they been effects on people I know, and what are the ongoing proven scientific questions that are still outstanding with hypotheses out there, but maybe no proof or evidence, and we're still sailing on, on unknown, uncharted waters. So I'm going to cover on some of those things as we discuss this subject of consequences. Probably could have called this health risks, um, you know, <laughs> some other some other colorful names, but I think consequences rounds it up nicely. So what are the consequences of playing in VR? Well, when I first started, I was using the DK2, one of the developer kits. 
and I played it for about as much contact time as I do now, around about 20 hours a week. Uh, except I was doing maybe more nights. I was doing shows six nights a week at that time. Now I'm doing four. And three hours each. So, you do the math. There you go. So around about 20 contact hours, you know, in a given in a given week. And uh, what, what, what did I think was going to happen? I, I didn't have much of a firm understanding of what was going to happen eye-wise to me. And that was certainly my most, my biggest concern. Didn't want to lose my eyesight. Uh, but anything else, I wasn't really nervous about, you know, social implications, being cut, cut off from the world or whatever. And if anything, anything I can prove is it's done, done anything but that. But I think it's very easy to take that stance and to say, you know what, actually in contrast to what popular opinion is, those who jump into a headset aren't isolationists, they don't just hold themselves hostage inside the headset inside the virtual world, disappear from their obligations and reality, and actually just say, F reality, ha <laughs> ha, shameless plug there. F reality and I'm gonna go do whatever it is I wanna do, not what you force me to do because of my physical constraints. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. Let's get back to the main point. The point I was trying to make was, what were the real effects of virtual reality? One of the first consequences people have noticed is of course sim sickness, and I did have that for the first couple of weeks. Uh, what I found works really well to cure that, for those who wonder, is what I call the golden rule. Just like if you're trying on a new pair of shoes, like stilettos, nine inch pumps, whatever, tickles your fancy, yeah? You, you don't just, you know, go out on a night in nine inch stilettos having not done any pre-work. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna dip your toes in steadily, because if you don't, you're gonna come home practically crippled by these things that have worn off all the skin of your toes or whatever. I don't know. I don't have any experience with stilettos, but I imagine that's how it goes. I do wear insoles, actually, uh, just to correct the height uh, difference between my left and right side, which is kind of a funny thing. I'm a little bit out, and uh, so I know what that's like. And you don't just wear them straight off the bat. You actually dip in for 30 minutes, you come out, you go in for an hour, you come out, you go in for two hours, you come out, and you keep doing it until you're comfortable. You work your way up. It's the same thing with VR. The golden rule is, if you feel anything, just, just come out. Any kind of twinge, anything. Anything that's abnormal, right? Don't wait until you're vomiting, just come out of the thing. Anyway, modern headsets have such a good refresh rate and con software generally performs really well. that this, this isn't a normal consequence these days. Actually, I would say that a lot of the Go experiences and things like that, I've never had a uh, sim sickness feeling. Now, I've got what they call VR legs. Iron sides. I'm, I'm, I'm actually really... I've got really strong iron legs, and there's very few titles these days. Even if they're terribly performing, or spin you in place, or all that stuff, generally none of it gets to me. I don't even feel a thing. But, with that said, we also need to explore this a little bit deeper. So sim sickness is one thing. But Zim, what else did you experience early on? Uh, one of the weirdest things that I experienced, uh, I have to say, was uh, was even just coming out of the headset for the first time. You really feel like, whoa, oh my god, I was in another world. It's like, holy shit, right? That doesn't have any lasting impression, it fades in a couple of seconds. But that matrixy feeling of like being unplugged is awesome. It's really good, it's a positive consequence, I would say. The weirdest one for me is, if you've been VRing for a long time in the dark, because who needs to pay for lighting, especially if you're playing on your own or whatever, right? If you're on your own in the dark, like what? what exactly happens when you take the headset off? You feel all of a sudden like weird. It's like, whoa, I'm in this place? I'm not actually in this other place that I was in? Feels very strange. Very, very strange. Sorry if the audio breaks, by the way. Something going on with the buffering on here. Let me just uh, stop and see if I can correct that because that's kind of annoying. Let's go to something else now. Hopefully this will fix it. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. We're just having a bit of a chill drive anyway. So, just on that subject, okay? So when we're talking about consequences and we're talking about sim sickness and these other things affecting us, what else do we need to consider, right? What are the other things we need to consider? So, 
The other consequences that we've heard of are also social, social implications. Um, problems with vision. Um, other issues that, that people have, have faced have been a whole variety of things that I've seen online. All right, sorry, hold on there one second. I think this is not working right now. I'm gonna have to switch this over to make sure that we don't have this problem continuing because it's really annoying if it just keeps doing that. So bear with me a second here while I sort the audio out. But as we're going, you know, I think it's, I think it's important that we, uh, we actually go kind of item by item and uh, find, our, find our way through. All right, let's see if I can fix this now. See if that's gonna work. I see the problem here is um, I think the uh, the the place where we have the music running from is is is, is not running smoothly. So that's the that's the problem here. Now right, we're gonna give it a go. Give it a go. Let's see if we can. Sorry for the interruption, but it happens sometimes when you're driving. <laughs> it's another nice little lake there. That's Lake Louise's little cousin, I guess. That, like Elsa? I don't know what you call it. You know what? We're going to continue with the interrupted music because, feck it, it's just like giving texture to this lovely little broadcast and every so often you can focus on me instead of the music. There you go. Um, let's, let's actually just rip it here for a little bit. So, the consequences that I have experienced when I first was VRing was really odd. It was really odd. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. I'm going to... First thing I experienced, at a distance, like far away, right? When I was driving at like five or six car lengths ahead of me. Because my eyes had been so focused on this panel in front of me uh, and, and what I was seeing through it, which was essentially the equivalent of, I suppose, pseudo, in, uh, pseudo infinity or like looking at a mirror for a long time. Um, I found my eyes naturally wanting to relax in situations. So what would happen is I'd be driving and they'd go just kind of a little bit out of, like, like an unsharp filter, they'd go a little bit out of focus, which, I, which initially I found to be really odd. Um, and it certainly made me feel a little bit like, oh God, are, is my, are my eyes being degraded by the screen? Now I was a transient and after some time that actually went away, but in the early days, I did have something that I would call a consequence of spending so many contact hours with a screen close to your face um, where you're looking at it, there's a screen door effect or whatever. So that's part one. The second thing, uh, which I would just, I would refer to as uh, a general lethargy, tiredness. Um, one of the things that took me about two years to work out what I was actually experiencing was uh, just this feeling of being like tired, extra tired, after a VR session than I was before. So I was trying to answer for myself for these years, well, why, why is that? That's so strange. Like, I'm just in a different reality. What's the deal? What's going on? And as a streamer, one of the things we have to do, especially if you're, into, if you're a VR streamer, is you're keeping your eyes and ears open and monitoring all the time like a monitoring tax on obviously chat your viewership interaction is technology working so actually what i figured out in the end was my body was not just mapping and paying attention to one reality it was a it was accommodating two realities and actually trying to not only um, track them but like be pinging and keeping updates on those environments. So where I'd be nose peeking through my headset to see chat, where I'd be um, checking to see if you know there was someone in the room with me or whatever, like those things actually had an effect on me and I wasn't aware of it, not a direct effect. It was kind of like this indirect uh, happening that I couldn't explain. And to this day, I am convinced, and I will tell you before you get into VR or if you're already into VR, it's something where there's a tiredness factor to it. it. There is more drain on your system, on your human body, your brain, your physical form, all that, than there is if you were just interacting in the room without being in a second environment at the same time. And that's really neat. 
That's like a really neat effect, and at the same time, maybe for some people, would be a little concerning, right? Because it's like, well, do I really want that effect on me? Um, and that's one of the things you have to ask yourself. Like, do I, do I care? I wouldn't say it's had long-term negative effects, no. Uh, but it's most certainly a consequence of VR that I have experienced. And I find it to be really interesting. Um, that one is probably the ultimate consequence of using VR that I can demonstrate. I would put my hand on my heart and say, I absolutely know for sure that that is something that's happening. So that's one consequence. The earlier transient with the eyes was something else. And anything else? Can I say anything else about this? Um, another consequence of VR, if you play games, kind of violent games like Gorn, uh, which we touched on in, last, in the last uh, episode, um, sometimes, if you're not careful with your environment, like our example of the Russian guy who fell through the glass table, you can hurt yourself, right? You can hit, hit a wall, damage a controller, damage yourself. I was playing Gorn one day and I punched really hard one of the, one of the enemies and I actually ended up punching a hard wood staircase that's in my room. That's a bit of a funny thing. And um, punched it full on and I could have sworn I broke my hand. Like it was, my hand was hurting for about a month. I never got an x-ray, so I hope I didn't actually fracture anything, but I wouldn't be surprised if I had. Still working fine to this day, so, you know, probably come back and ache at me or something when I'm 90. Um, but there you go. That's, that's another one. That's another one to be aware of. So the other consequences of VR, which I, which I wanted to touch on, was probably the social ones. Like, what else does, what else does it do? The, one of the coolest consequences of VR is the reduction or elimination of prejudice. Like, I have found myself hanging out with people who are uh, way younger than me in a, in a geography I'd probably never have ever visited, um, you know, play games with people. And this is true for a lot of games, but VR brings another kind of physicality to it or permanence where you feel like you've really met someone. Uh, and that's a really interesting aspect to it. You can see their body language. You can uh, generally tell what they're like as an individual. You could sit down and play poker with them. Um, you might even get to know some of their some of their tells just through their minor nuances in their body language. Sometimes you get to hear their environment, like what, what they're in. And sometimes the, the accents or, or their, uh, their surroundings are so very different to yours that you get this little window, this snippet into someone else's reality, but it's not your own. Um, and being able to portal that way is incredibly powerful. So, look, what I wanted to do was, was really just kind of open this theme, and I think it's a really interesting theme. I really do. I think that, I think that as a theme, um, consequences is so open-ended, both in the positive and the negative sphere. And for me, I've certainly found a lot of, of consequences, both positive and negative. And so I want to thank you for joining me on this Sunday Drive, and until the next episode, um, take care, and don't do anything that I wouldn't do. Woo! Yeah! That's... <laughs> oh, God. And that's us done. With consequences of being a bad driver.